In this video, I'm going to show how I turned this lesson into a Google Doc so that students would have all the materials in one place and wouldn't have to switch between slides uh, in addition to going through all, all of the links that they have. You can access this Google Doc at the link on the screen and the document follows the same format as the slides, uh, starts with the focus question and the lesson objective and then provides a little bit of background for students to set them up for the lesson. You can access the same link which is in the Google Slides of, of Europe in 1940 um, and it also gives students the same direction to write their responses in the blue boxes just to remain consistent in case you're sometimes using a slide deck and sometimes using a Google document. It starts off with the introduction or model portion of the lesson which uh, is intended to be taught synchronously and led by you but how you do this is up to you what uh, the system of system uh, the system in your own school. The uh, fireside chat cartoon is going to be on the left side and students have two questions to answer on the right. Again, you can do this yourself with them leading it or they can be doing this on their own. And I am going to show you some potential answers to these questions at the end of this at the end of this video. Uh, so if you are interested in looking at that, uh, skip to the end. Uh, the lesson continues or the instruction por portion of the lesson continues with the video. Uh, so I just took what was on four slides and I put it all into one uh, Google document with the directions and the vocabulary at the top. Um, I did want to keep the, the video increment guidelines because it's a lot easier for students to dig deep into the 50 seconds if they know, okay, this question corresponds to the first, first 50 seconds. But if they're watching the whole two, four, two minute and 45 second video before answering all the questions, that's going to be fine. Uh, so the students will answer these questions underneath in the blue space underneath them. And uh, this is something that you would want to figure out. How are you going to do? Are you going to guide them through this or release them to do, do this? Um, that's up to your own class. Continuing on with the independent work portion of the lesson or the, or the asynchronous portion of the lesson. Um, in the in the slide deck, it has students. It gives students access to the article and to this press conference, which is which is down below on one slide. I felt that that was a little confusing, so I divided it up in the in the document. I link the article and I provide them with the questions that they should be responding to in the article right there, and they'll just answer that right below. And then I do the press conference uh, in its in its own section. I also felt that because the press conference excerpt was pretty short, uh, I could avoid having them go to another link. And instead, I just I just pasted the excerpt into this document, uh, which is it's all right here. And I have them answering the question underneath it. Uh, just returning a little bit quickly to the article. The article is um, it's it's pretty long, and this lesson already has quite a bit in it. So the article is a place where you can choose. Uh, maybe you don't have them read the whole article. Maybe you select some pieces of it for them to focus on. If you have time for them to read the whole article, it is really uh, helpful and uh, and it, it gives you a clear understanding of how the Lend-Lease Act worked and who disagreed with it and, and how it benefited uh, both the Allied powers and the U.S. alone. Um, but if you're if you're interested in just using the videos or taking pieces of the article, then go ahead and adjust your lesson for that. And then the lesson ends with the wrap up and check for understanding uh, on the final page. So uh, that's it for the Google document. You can adjust these to fit your own class needs. If you want to take a look at the some potential answers to those questions, uh, continue watching. Otherwise, uh, you can end the video. So uh, I just put some basic answers to these questions, and I'm going to go over those really, really quickly. Uh, so in the fireside chat cartoon, Congress is on the left here, and FDR is on the right. And the cartoon is entitled Fireside Chat because it's a play on the uh, radio broadcast FDR gave. But instead of a reassuring broadcast, FDR and Congress are arguing about whether they should be involved in World War II while Europe burns um, or is being destroyed by the war itself. Uh, it's a nice little entry into the lesson. The videos uh, questions, 
How did the U.S. support Great Britain in World War II prior to 1941? Uh, the answer is pretty quick in the video, so it might be easy to miss. Um, but it said, but the, the video talks about the cash and carry rule and that the United States had been selling Great Britain munitions under the cash and carry rule, which is very different from what the Lend-Lease Act would do, which is really loaning supplies and materials to the Allied powers. Uh, why did some people in the U.S. oppose the Lend-Lease Act? Um, that's a pretty straightforward answer. Some people believe the Lend-Lease Act would give uh, FDR the power to go to war without congressional approval. Ex you know, to go to war, to do all the all the uh, the behaviors of going to war except sending troops. And people were still really unsure about whether the U.S. should enter the war. And at the end of the video, the question is, who benefited from the Lend-Lease Act? Uh, and a straightforward answer here is that the Allied powers benefited because they got they got more resources to fight the Axis powers, and that it, you can argue the Allied powers would have lost without the Lend-Lease Act. Um, with the article, which has basically two questions, the first one is very similar to the to the question we just answered with the video, but the second question is a little bit more complex. How did it help the U.S.? Um, so the Lend-Lease Act gave, did give supplies and resources to the British, Chinese, and Soviets in their fight against Nazi Germany um, and Nazi and Germany's allies. But the act benefited the U.S. for a couple in a couple of ways. One, it helped defeat Nazi Germany, which was considered the U.S. enemy uh, during World War II. But it also set the U.S. up as an international leader at the end of the war. So that's actually a really big uh, factor of the Lend-Lease Act that is easy to overlook. And the final question, uh, which refers to the press conference um, in which FDR explains the Lend-Lease Act, this, this has a variety of answers because it is, it is asking the students to explain FDR's argument in their own words, but potentially uh, an answer could be that the U.S. should loan the Allied powers supplies because if they don't, they're going to be destroyed, just like the neighbor's house. If he doesn't get the hose, we shouldn't hold on to supplies we're not using just to try to profit off someone who needs it right now. As long as we get our property back in the same condition, we'll, we'll be okay. But there's a variety of answers that uh, students can give to that. So that's the that's the uh, the Google document version of this lesson. And if you want to uh, adjust that for your students, make sure to access, access the link uh, to make a copy.